So let's go with the first question. What might be a threshold situation that you are facing in your life and work right now? In other words, a possible moment of unlearning. <laughs> Such an interesting question to start with, especially at this time today, um, because I think working remotely is one of the most rewarding ways to have freedom, but it's also a very challenging way to find balance. And this is also what I encourage for students and for the team to help find their balance. Um, but I think with working remotely, we are always just trying new things, trying new routines and new ways. Um, but for me personally in Taiwan, I've been living a free life with no COVID for the past year and a half until two months ago. And now we are learning how to deal with COVID and we've been in lockdown. And so I'm leaning on other people who have had this experience. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm unlearning routines and relearning routines as I'm a little bit stuck inside, but it's okay. They're doing a great job of maintaining it. And hopefully in a few weeks we will be, you know, free of this. So um, I think whether or not we're in lockdown or COVID or things are, you know, uplifting beneath us that we have no control of, it's just a new way of finding balance and to relearn the ways that um, we can, you know, find the freedom that we want to build the life that we need. And I think this is so closely related to students who are self-directed because they're also building their own life. The families are able to have their own structure and their own freedom as well. So um, I think just in general, it, it's a new challenge for everyone to lean on others and to find that support when things are changing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, briefly sharing maybe your journey, two or three events, you already started saying a bit, two or three events or people that uh, shaped your reimagining education. Yeah, I love this question. And I definitely had a incredible first experience when I was teaching. Um, I didn't know that I wanted to be a teacher and I was invited on a teacher immersion experience in the highlands of Fiji when I was studying in Australia. And it was through this experience that I was with a group of teachers and we went to this village every day. And one of the kind of guidelines for being here was that you weren't allowed to have any source of technology. So there was no way to tell the time. You just wake up with the sun and you walk to the village and you teach them. And one of the most beautiful parts about this interaction was that the community showed up to the classroom to learn. So the kids were in the front the grandparents were in the back and the parents were outside working or, or around and helping. And everyone was there together. And I think when we see that people are there to learn as a community and to support each other, it's such an awesome way to see firsthand, I guess, is my first um, experience in education um, in, as a teacher. And the other person, I guess uh, that would be an event. And then one person that I admire and that I look up to is Sarah Blakely as an entrepreneur. And in her quote, where she says, don't be intimidated. Inti so sorry, let me start over. She says, don't be intimidated by what you don't know. And I think that this is so true for our students that we have the ability to learn the things that we want at our fingertips. We just need to make the connection and provide that support and the mentors and the structure to give them that freedom. So really just unlocking everything that's available. And I really like that quote from her and it really sets, sets the scene for us, I think too. Thank you for both. Uh, thank you for sharing these both events. Having an image of freedom, I think it's absolutely amazing to share with us this, as well as, um, as the quote of not knowing or yes, being comfortable with that. So what is uh, emerging for you with reimagining education right now? Can you talk about the prototyping idea? Yeah, I think for this question, it's such a great time that we had this, this conversation today, you know, after yesterday, because recently we've been thinking a lot about how socializing and learning or collaborative engagement is one in the same or separate. So do students show up at a club for a learning experience or are they here to socialize? And what is the learning being done? So in self-directed learning, 
the students are at their free will to choose what they want to do. But of course, it's the parents who expect them to learn because they're attending a school. Um, so the, the measurement of success is often, um, I guess, has different expectations for everyone. And when students are socializing, they might feel successful and they might, might want to continue to show up. But if they cannot show their progress, and this isn't beautifully communicated for the objective, that's something that we've been examining. So I think what is prototyping is the idea of having that social, that learning engagement time, but maybe the learning or the knowledge transfer is happening on their own independent time. So we know between humans, we have different peak hours in our day. So why put everyone there to listen? We don't want to lecture. They can learn that thing on their own. So what is the content matched with that live experience and that engagement for the learning independently and socializing with the learning that you've already done? So um, I would say the prototype is very early, but it's a kind of a change of clubs and more boot camps. And um, we're also working on on-demand nanos that we are releasing as well. So seeing a hybrid model as well, maybe it doesn't need to be a social experience online, but maybe this is in person. So we've recently launched local dojos where people can go and learn in a physical location. So this is a great way for students to have that online experience with a global community and an offline in interaction as well. So there's definitely a mixture that has been happening, but what are the boot camps that we can provide at these local dojos to make that all round hybrid experience the best one that they can have? Mm -hmm. How do we engage meaningfully with traditional wisdom or ancient wisdom for learning and education? And what would you like to see happening in the next three to five years? Yeah, I would like to just go back to the experience I had in Fiji. So when we are talking about community and support, it's some of the most successful learners that are supported by other mentors, other adults, including their parents and their community. Um, so self-directed learning is not for students to go into the classroom with all their same age and learn top down from a teacher. We've removed that teacher to student and we're now partners in learning. We're facilitating the environment, we're providing the content, and we're there to learn as a community and to support students and everyone that is there to learn. No one has all the answers. So as adults, we are also learning alongside them. And let's break down that barrier and make the learning comfortable and make everyone curious and creative and enjoy the learning process. So we want to bring back that love for learning when we have that community support. Um, looking ahead into the future, I think when the community is getting bigger, the students are able to connect online and they're able to have more of a global aspect, a global perspective at this community and see what other people are doing. So they can start locally, they can start online, but eventually they might want to travel and meet their friends that they've made. Maybe they've built projects together and they're building apps and games and all sorts of creations that they have with a global team just like you and I, you know, in our career as well. So it's incredible that they have this experience. Um, and I hope that this will foster something for them to eventually connect those communities all together.